Hello students, welcome to the channel Top Gate. In this video, I will introduce you to the concept of deterministic finite automata that is a DFA. So in the previous video, we have discussed what is theory of computation and in theory of computation, we have discussed that uh, what kinds of automata are there. So there are two kinds of uh, finite automata. One is finite automata with output, one is finite automata without output. Okay. So in finite automata with output, we have two machines namely NFA and the DFA and in finite automata without output we have two machines that is Miele and the Moore machines. Okay, So in this video we will start with the deterministic finite automata that is a DFA. So in theory of computation whatever machines we study we always represent these machines in the form of some tuples. Okay, So the mathematical representation of DFA is done by five tuples. We have Q, Sigma, Delta, Q0 and F. Okay, so M is this machine that is a DFA and we have five tuples Q, Sigma, Delta, Q0 and F. So what is Q? So Q is a finite non-empty set of states. Okay, so when I uh, was discussing about the automaton in that one I told you that uh, the characteristics of that automaton were there was input, there was output and in between the input and the output there were some states that is while processing some computation a machine transits from one state to another. Okay, So that will be called as the states that is Q is a finite non-empty set of state that is there will be always a finite number of states and it should be non-empty also that is some state should be there at least one state should be there and it should be a finite number also it cannot be an infinite states in this machine okay this is the first one the second one is sigma sigma is a finite non-empty set of inputs this we have already discussed that sigma is the first thing in a language is a symbol and out of that symbol i take out some alphabets i take out some symbols and i call them as a alphabets okay and now this alphabet will be used to make a particular string so uh, it is a sigma which should be a finite that is it cannot be an infinite and it should be a non-empty also that is some sigma some alphabet should be there okay that is called as the input alphabets okay now the next one is q0 q0 belongs to q that is it is the initial state what does that mean q0 is the initial state and it should be from the Q only that is the states only that is if there are three states out of those three states one should be a initial state okay then the next one F F is a subset of Q what does that mean F is a final state it is a set of final states that means there can be more than one final state also in a finite automata okay so all those states which are acting as a final states will be called as a set of final states and they all should belong to the capital q only okay and the last one that is the most important one is the transition function that is called as delta so delta is a transition function that is q cross sigma gives q now i'll explain to you what does this mean because this is the most important thing and the uh, whole working of the finite automata depends upon this transition function only. Okay, So when I was discuss, discussing theory of computation, I told you that automaton when it process something, it transits from one state to another. Now how does it transit from one state to another? That depends upon a particular formula, that depends upon a particular input that is applied at a particular instant of time. Okay, So I will explain to you what is this transition function, how a state is change from uh, by applying one input okay so how to transit from one state to another that is this one okay now what is this q q is any state that is it can be q0 it can be q1 q2 q3 so on any state suppose we have a state as q0 okay on this state q0 any input alphabet applied so input alphabet can be anything it can say it is a so on q0 a is applied Okay, so as soon as we apply A on this Q0, what we get? We get some state only that is some state may be Q1. Okay, so at state, at any state, I apply any input alphabet and I move on to certain state that is a transition function. Okay, so I'll explain to you uh, in, with the help of the DFA. Now this DFA can be represented in two forms. Okay, the first form is the transition table okay so this is the transition table and the second form is a transition graph okay so i'll explain to you what does this transition table means and transition graph means 
okay so read this one uh, this is a transition table that is it is a present state in present state we have q0 q1 q2 q3 and this is the input the input alphabet that we have is a and b okay now what does that mean at state q0 when input symbol a is applied then we reach on to state q1 so if i have to write this one so i'll write like this that is on state q0 input alphabet a is applied and where do we reach we reach on state q1 similarly on state q0 input alphabet b is applied where we have reached we have reached on to state q2 similarly for this one uh, this sorry q1 so on state q1 input alphabet a applied where do we go we go on to state q1 on state q1 input alphabet b applied that is q1 comma b where do we go we go on to state q1 so this is the transition table and in this transition table this arrow means it is an initial state so every time uh, whenever we are making a dfa i should have a initial state that is a mandatory case okay and this circle means that this is a final state okay so whenever we are trying to accept any string on a dfa we should start from some initial state and then we have to hop around the states we have to transit from one state to another and finally we should terminate at some final state okay so this is the first representation that is called as the transition table and this is the second one the second one is the transition graph okay this is only the graphical representation of this table okay now how do we read this that is the initial state is q0 on this initial state q0 input alphabet a is applied and we are moving on to state q1 that is on q0 a is applied we are moving on to q1 on q0 b is applied we are moving on to state q2 and so on okay this is your initial state and this double circle means the final state okay so this is the second representation of the dfa that is a deterministic finite automata okay now suppose i give you a string say i give you uh, w is equal to so w is a string only so i give you w is equal to say a b b a b okay so and i ask you whether this string is accepted by this dfa or not okay so how how i'll um, check it so i'll start with always a initial state that is the initial state here is q0 so i'll start with q0 okay so i'll read this a and at a what i am getting q0 okay so at when i'm at q0 and the input alphabet applied is a so where do we reach we reach on to state q1 okay now at q1 the next input is b so at q1 when b is applied q1 b is applied where do we reach we reach on to state q1 only that is i'll reach on to state q1 then again as state q1 input b is applied again when b is applied we are at state q1 only now at q1 again input a is applied okay so as input a is applied we again reach on to state q1 at q1 again input b is applied so at b will again reach on to state q1 and this q1 is your final state therefore this string is accepted by this machine and the sequence of states while compute computing this string is q0 q1 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 okay so this will be the sequence of states while performing the computation of the string a b b a b okay so this is the representation of the deterministic finite automata now the next thing the most the very important thing why do we called it as a deterministic finite automata so deterministic finite automata means that at any state i with the help of the current input i can determine on which state i have to move on okay so like at q0 if input a is applied so i know i will go on to q1 okay at q0 if input b is applied so i know that i can reach on to state q2 okay so if in this case sigma is equal to say 
a b that is only a and b are used in this case and in this sigma if in this dfa there should be exactly two paths for both the inputs that is one path should be for a one path should be for b so for every state i should have exactly two paths one for a one for b that is on q0 i have two outgoing paths one for a one for b at q2 i have two outgoing paths one for b one for a at q3 we have two paths one for a one for b okay at q1 i have two paths one for a one for b that is this is a deterministic finite automata that is it should have exactly one path for every input that is i cannot write it like this why because for current input a i have two paths one this way one this way so this is not allowed in deterministic finite automata it should be a different input alphabet only okay so there are two conditions one first condition is for every input alphabet i should have exactly one path and for any state at any state there should be exactly as many paths as many there are inputs input alphabets okay so if there are two input alphabets we should have two paths if there are three input alphabets we should have three paths so one path for every input alphabet that is a mandatory case in a deterministic finite automata so that is all in this dfa next in the next video i will discuss some problems of dfa uh, that is all thank you so much